Greetings, goons, ghosts, and goblins! It's your boy, the Gucci Stoic Knight, and today we're doing a review on the Opscore Mark 1s. So, previously I've been using the ESS crossbow as my go-to sort of like glasses for all sorts of shooting-related activities, and um, the key thing was, prior to having LASIK, is you can get little inserts with the ESS goggles, the ESS crossbow suppressors and stuff, and uh, yeah, so the little inserts went a long way if you're freaking blind. So after getting LASIK, I wanted to get like better shades, better glasses and stuff. And of course about like $10 cheap shades, didn't work too well. And then my buddy, the firefighter and fellow veteran, recommended Pit Vipers. And I was like, oh yeah, those things from back in the day. Big old goggles, big old goggles are cool. But ultimately the little freaking frame design in an attempt to be suitable for every face structure Sort of had, um, the materials aren't really the greatest. They do tend to fall apart relatively quickly. And having had other pairs of glasses, particularly seeing glasses break all the time, so I wanted something very durable, very, uh, well, this is pretty much going to meet the description. These are insanely durable because they're made out of whatever crazy semi-flexible alloy they got going on there. So I got one set going for shades, and this was the first one I bought, I bought the ones in tan. I was running the uh, red lenses. Actually, I have two pairs. We're going to be talking about that here in a second. I was running the red lenses in the tan, but aesthetically, it wasn't the best. Functionally, perfect, but you had tan, black, and then red. Whereas you could just have the more two-color setup with tan and black, or in that case, black and red. So, these are really cool. This is really easy to swap out the, um, the lenses. Everything's really intuitive. Here we have like the standard inserts. So basically, we have three pieces all together here. You've got the outer frames, which is your super durable insanity, which is really great. This little nose bridge, kind of nerdy with how square shaped it is, but it's structurally sound, so we're going to go with it. So you got those, you got the little insert, little cups here, and then you got the actual lenses themselves. So we were in the standard cups here. I did get the freaking padded ones, which look like these guys right here. So these things got the little padding on the side, so they give you a little bit of a sort of a suction seal going on. Yeah, look at that. That looks super hardcore. Never, no one's ever put freaking shoe polish on uh, binoculars before, you know? So yeah, these guys, they sit up against your eyes, and they do get that seal going. They will give you a little bit of extra protection. However, and this could just be me being me, not like an every person sort of ordeal, they would run all up against my eyebrows. Every time I move the eyebrows, you just feel these little foam cups brushing the eyebrows all over the place. And for me, it was distracting. So ultimately I ended up going back to the standard ones because I'm mostly using these for everyday activities, driving and whatnot. So, we got those ones going, but we also have our black frames that we got more recently. These are still more of a stock. They still got the same U-shape going on. I did flatten out the uh, tan ones a bit more to better meet up with my uh, head shape. But most importantly, when you do put them on your hat and stuff, they don't like fall off or do anything crazy. So I do like the fact you can secure them up on your hat. Um, you can do the normal t-shirt sort of shindig. They're pretty durable, pretty effective, and pretty snazzy. But, of course, since we are wearing our freaking um, notch hat, the notch hat does give the nice little... You get the closer cuts and you can get the shades up nice and close to the eyes without any conflict between your hat and your eye pro. So, it is a nice little thing to have that does give the hat... The, adding the hat does help block out a lot of the sun. And you don't have too much of a gap down here at the bottom. Not a whole lot going on. These would be covered up by the um, foam inserts if we were going that way. And of course up at the top, there is a little gap where you get like sunlight and stuff through, but a hat easily solves that problem. So we pop these ones out there. We're going to throw in these black ones here real quick. And I've always really liked the red. So as you may know, the red lenses are just for the sake of being red, which would be the case with the ESS. The key difference we got going on here Although I do like this sort of like flexible, low profile setup when you're wearing ear pro over these. The metal one creates a little bit more of a gap. The key difference here is that this red is part of their Dazzle series. So much like the freaking step and visor I got going for the helmet, if you do catch stray lasers and crazy stuff to the eyes that would generally blind you for life, now you got some sort of like laser defense that'll generally keep you relatively safe or at least significantly mitigate the damages. Which is cool, because, you know, laser warfare, that's what the uh, future's all about. And especially if you're doing your own low-light night vision training and stuff, and you hit your full-powered peck, or pursed four because you want something full-powered that's not regulated and imported, 
because you're absolutely insane and you don't mind the concept of blinding yourself, then having a negligent discharge from the Purse 4 itself that hits a mirror or something metallic and comes back into your eyes, this will play a huge role in making sure you are not blind. Which, after you invest a bunch of money into LASIK, you're definitely trying not to become. So these red lenses giving you some laser defense is pretty cool. Am I going to test it? Not particularly. I already spent too much money. I'm not going to try to shoot a laser through my glasses into my eyeball. For the same reason, I'm not going to throw on my sappy plate and ask my friend to shoot me in the chest. <laughs> it's, I, I'm going to trust that the plate is going to do its job. I'm going to trust these lenses are going to do their job. And if they don't, we'll cross that bridge when we get there and probably scream and cry and all that stuff. So... I do, I always like the red lenses. So the key thing with the red lenses, outside of just looking aesthetically cool as hell and have it in laser defense, is people do see them and they go, oh wow, it is truly the black, you really are the black powder red earth. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a really cool comic book series that I learned of entirely through video games. Where my first, or one of my earlier runs where I stopped playing was because my four dudes walked next to a building, a guy's popped out from across the street, so all four of my guys lit them up and I was like, okay, cool, good first turn. And turn, immediately the door next to me goes, oh hey, Americans! And all my guys got blown up by a uh, boom boom vest. And um, I was like, wow, cool, great game. I'm uh, gonna just close this. And several months later, I'm making this review. So, Black Powder Red Earth, really cool. However, that is not the key reason I was super thrilled with uh, the red eye lenses. Not just because of that, but as you noticed, I did have these long before I noticed Black Powder Red Earth was a thing that existed. And I'm glad I found it because it's really cool. But the red lenses and the whole thing to me is that I'm actually a bit, eh, I'm maybe showing a bit of age here, but back in the day you had Hank J. Wimbledon and he had the cool circle red glasses from the uh, Madness series. And I was a huge fan of that growing up. And it's cool that they're making the return. They got the freaking Project Nexus going on. So yeah, red lenses. I do enjoy them, although they are, I think every glass surface in Black Power Red Earth is red. I don't think any of the Humvees, the helicopters, all that cool stuff. All red, and yeah, no dead redemption involved, however, so. I think we've rambled on just about enough key, other key points. Made in the USA, naturally. Very compliant, good stuff there. And uh, yeah, they say Mark 1 right there on the little nerdy nose we're just talking about. They got these super reinforced hinges. They got, uh, what is it, they got... Yeah, they got four little like bolt things going on there, so those can't be removed. They're like friggin' I can't remember what you call them. Those little not bar tacks, but whatever crazy freaking kachunk kachunk machinery going on. You got these super reinforced hinges, which is great because that means they're less inclined to break. However, if you were to have something go catastrophically wrong, there are screws up on the top or the bottom and the top of those uh said hinges, so if you need to swap something out, you can still salvage earpieces or parts of the frame and put them back together. So that's a cool little addition. I haven't had a opportunity or really a um, any luck breaking these. I have sat on them on several occasions because they've fallen off of my hat or onto my seat or something and they're driving on and be like, hey, that's not my wallet. And yeah, so cool little frame. So we talked about that a bit. They do come in tan. I think they come, they come tan, black, and they come in a uh, foliage green, I believe. As far as the lenses, you got the black ones, you got the clear ones. Got the cool red laser reflective ones sold separately. Those only those first two come in the uh, package. And they got a high contrast yellow because it's just really popular. And yeah, so we're talking about all that. So how do we swap all these things around? So as far as if we want to swap out the um, inserts for the little eyelids, they are relatively flexible. And you can see where the grooves are there that they fit into the frame themselves. So they're relatively easy to put in. So. Since I use these particularly for nighttime ordeal, and less so during the day because these red lenses, although they are freaking designed to protect against lasers and whatnot, are less effective. I'm sure they work with like UV light, but the sun is still really freaking bright at the end of the day, so the, the darker uh, shades work a lot better. So as far as swatching all those things out, all you gotta do is hold the uh, nose piece here, which is probably part of the reason why it's so big and reinforced, then you push out on the eye, on the inside of the lens here. Give that a little push. You want to bend the frame a bit and the lens comes right out like so. And now we got, so if we had an eye patch, like a huge freaking, oh wow, that is, put a blue lens in here. You got 3D glasses. Let's go. So yeah, now you got, ow. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't have a lens there, it kind of uh, sucks. But maybe you're one of those glasses models that doesn't actually wear glasses, but people want to see you wearing glasses so you can take the lens out like a freaking nerd. 
And yeah, so our insert's in there. As far as getting the insert out, all you gotta do is get a little squeezy squeeze, push that on out, push that on out, and show bam, we freed up our little lens. So that's the basic one right there without the cool eye stuff. As far as the inside of the frame, again, relatively basic. Just bits of a, uh, just a really nice cut of metal. So they are designed so the lenses cannot be knocked inwards, but with a little bit of effort, you can get them pushed outwards. So anything impacting your eye isn't going to go through like my finger did just a second ago, but um, you can only push things out like that way. But you're not going to have anything coming in, which is good because uh, you don't want things hitting you in the eye. It's uh, not a good day. And um, even when you're doing relatively mundane, normal task out in the woods, you still want to have eye pro because you don't want freaking branches and stuff taking your eyeballs. So if we're putting these back in, the uh, little gasket lens here is the easiest. Because again, you just give that the little bend on the top and bottom, get it seated in. Do do do. This is easier to do on a table, but I, when I wasn't in front of a camera, the thousands of people judging my every action. <laughs> Come on. You go down there. So I think we're going to want to work in from the inside on out. I think that's going to be... I mean, there's an instruction manual, but... Are we really going to be bothered to read all of that? That's kind of like... I mean, reading is kind of a nerd trait. Oh no, I pushed it too far. Everything's gone wrong. Ah! Alright, so we got the little... Uh, freaking gasket insert back there. So as far as inserting lenses... There is a right, lane, a right lens and a left lens, so... Gotta lose a little bit of the uh, cognitive powers up there. You want to push the little left side, the outside in first. You push the outside in first, and then you just basically want to work your way around the outside, the sides of the lens, and bam! Once you get that click, everything's in place. You've covered everything in fingerprints because you didn't wear glasses like a, or uh, freaking gloves like a smart person. But they have microfiber tiles and everything, and bam! We are back. So if anything goes wrong with your lenses, they're easy to swap out. Though the red freaking dazzle lenses are a bit on the pricier side. So, what else comes with these? Well, you get a cool little bag. And the cool little bag says Opscore on it. But unlike the glasses themselves, this one is uh, made in the land of dirty communism. So, it's alright. I mean, this is a protective bag. You can always buy something aftermarket. Like the freaking what is this thing? I've had this forever. The night eyes, little innovations. I think these fit in here. Where was this patent pending? I don't know. I've had this forever. I don't remember where it's made. But this has a big old cleaning cloth built into it, which I always thought was really nifty. So when we do something like swap out lenses, you can get that a little clean, a little wipe down. Do do do. This is probably easier when I don't have the when I have the thing attached to something. But yeah. And do these fit into the night eyes? Let's find out. Do, 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 do. Fold those up. And... Ah, oh, kind of. They go in sideways, but you can get them to fit, so... There you go. If you needed a comfy, semi... semi-tough case for your shades, you are covered there, so... Again, like I said, yeah, we, got two, we got two pairs of glasses. We got the legendary six eyes going on, so... Like I said, these are only really for people who have good eyesight or you don't mind wearing contact lenses or you got LASIK like I did so you can get away from the heavier little bulky inserts and whatnot. So, do I recommend these? Absolutely. These are pretty cool, particularly if you're not wearing a helmet. Hey, helmets! We didn't talk about that now, did we? So we got our guys here. We're going to put them off on the side. We're going to grab our old reliable help. Head, a little freaking head bucket here. I'm going to strap that on down. And normally, I would just put on my step and visor. The reason I like the visor is it's all connected to the top of the lid. So when running a helmet, I do prefer that over the glasses because our ear pro is going to cause just that little bit of discomfort. But at the same time, we've also got the freaking, uh, what should I call it? The, uh... We got the little inserts we can always throw in, so we got, we got the NFMI enabled, so we can always still hear stuff. And right now, I can't hear anything, because these aren't turned on yet. There we go. Alright, so everything's no hearing is back to normal. Got the earpieces on. They're not causing a whole lot of strain, because these are relatively low profile for the most part. So you can wear these. If you don't have your little step and visor ready to go, these are relatively easy to put on. Pop out the ear pro. Shabam, you can take them off. Do whatever you gotta do. And easy peasy on and off. So if we take those 
And we throw in a little step and visor here. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, there's a slot there and there. Ka-ching! So yeah, if you are doing a little bit of uh, stuff, this is good. They do, unlike the step and visor, unlike the step and visor, you do leave the uh, parts of your cheek and stuff exposed and the little top of your brow. So nothing too crazy, but you would get significantly a little um, better protection with the step and visor, especially since the step and visor is designed for jumping out of planes and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So it's going to have less uh, movement and problems than you're going to get with these glasses. Though the glasses are still relatively comfortable, you can use them for all sorts of operations. Pop these guys free. Ugh, there we go. So, easy peasy. They fit, they work, they're doing a good job. Let's uh, salt these out with the red ones real quick and we'll see how much of a difference there is. And yeah, so you're going to be doing some night vision stuff. Shabam, throwing the red lenses. Didn't even need to pop them out and swap them out. So yeah, these ones, I haven't like bent these as much. So there's a little bit of a... Uh, Actually, I still think I got a, still think I got a really good seal going on. Though these are fogging up with the helmet, I think the heat's dissipating downwards, and that's giving me a little bit of fog going on. Yeah, a little bit of fogging. So I didn't have that with the uh, step and visor, actually. Yeah, so you have a few seconds of the helmet pushing head heat and stuff down, but it tends to like dissipate. Yeah, it's like starting to slowly dissipate upwards. But that is something interesting. I've never seen him do that before. So yeah. Probably gonna want some uh, cat crap or some sort of like anti-fogging agent. You're gonna be running shades with the helmet. Turn these guys off. Pop those free. And just yes, one of the key benefits you're gonna get. Oh yeah, once the helmet's off, that's clearing right up. Key benefit you're generally gonna get is you can throw on your hat. But if you want to keep laser protection without needing the entire setup on the head, then you can throw these on with any sort of like ear pro. These aren't the best example because these have really uh, stiff ears. Here's my, yeah, give me some sound. There we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. These ones echo a lot more. These aren't nearly as Gucci as the amps. So yeah, but these will give you hearing protection. The gaps predominantly close. I'm not getting any crazy sound coming in, although it is significantly less comfortable. And now like the hat's causing fog. Okay, so these ones are just fogging like it's cool. I have no idea why was less so an issue with the step and visor. It could be the proximity to the face or something like that. So yeah. Anyway, relatively comfortable. You can get your cool operator headset pew, 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 going on with these. So if you're looking for, you turn these off, come on. If you're looking for something relatively everyday simple, I'll protect you from lasers and do all that cool stuff, then uh, yeah, can't really go wrong with the Mark 1s. However, if you're gonna be wearing a uh, friggin' bucket on your head all day, then um, you're probably gonna like the step and visor a bit more just for overall comfort, not having an earpiece. Or a little um, freaking, yeah, this guy up on your ears with the ear pro pushing down, because I'm sure over time, no matter how comfortable the amps will be, they'll eventually drive me insane. <laughs> Especially when there's uh, well known alternatives out there. So, that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions about these, um, hopefully, feel free to. Put it down in the comments. I check the YouTube comments less than I do check uh, messages and stuff on Instagram and Twitter. So again, those are the predominant places to get a hold of me if you guys want to ask any questions about that. Or if you leave a question on YouTube, you would be like, hey, I left a question on this video. Can you get back to that? And that also works pretty well. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you were looking for like a set of really cool glasses to replay, maybe you got LASIK recently and you want to get it Replace your little ESS guys with something else. There's a little... I think, the, I think the ears are getting to them. They're really flexible right now. Although this is really flat profile. This sit really well under ear pro. But again, not as well as the step and visor. So that's all I really got for you guys. But yeah, like questions, Instagram and Twitter, main two go-tos, or throw it up on uh, Instagram. If you message the Facebook page, I'll probably see it in three to six months whenever I do actually go on there and be like, is anything going on here? Because I forget it exists most of the time. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that's a little review. Um, so as in closing, uh, shout out to... There is a Patreon. And I do want to give a shout out to the Patreons for the, uh, the Weepy Lamb. Uh, one of my buddies out here on Okinawa who's doing predominantly lots of airsoft gun work. As well as my friend uh, DarkMagic96 who's back stateside. Who's contributing a good bit and also helping fund a lot of these things. Because she is the key contributor. So without her, the majority of these reviews would not be possible. 
So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Um, cheers, stay chivalrous, and um, above all, keep your eyes safe. You, you know, once you go blind, that's kind of like it. Unless you want to wait like 30 to 40 years for cybernetic upgrades to significantly increase the ability to see again. There's a lot of work. You could do the eye surgery, but then you start seeing crazy ghosts everywhere because it turns out the chick you got the eyes from was crazy. You get the idea. So cheers everyone, stay chivalrous. If you know who Hank J. Wimbledon is, then, uh, you know, kudos to you. See you, everyone.